So uh, my name is Peter Barth and uh, I, come to, I, I work at the Institute of uh, Chemistry and uh, Miloš Ricovini uh, got me into this um, uh, project or, or these collaborations and we started to do some mass, mass spectrometry analysis of uh, protein and glycosylation for those within the INSTRUCT project who are, who are interested in, uh, in this kind of uh, analysis. So, protein glycosylation is a non is, is a ubiquitous non-template post translation modification that plays uh, essential roles in uh, many cell processes, including secretion, <clears throat> folding, and transport. Uh, many signaling path pathways, for example, are initiated by by ligand binding to their cognate receptors at the surface of the cell. Uh, and most of them are in fact uh, glycoproteins. And for example, from biotechnological point of view, uh, biopharmacological products, uh, for example, therapeutic antibodies or, or enzymes need to be glycocompatible with the host. So they don't uh, trigger undesired immune response. Uh, recombinant uh, protein production in eukaryotic cells often uh, uh, that is often required for structural analysis uh, can result in addition of glycans uh, to their respective uh, modification sites. This, is, this can be advantage since the obtained uh, glycoprotein resembles its native form. Uh, and it is crucial, especially when the glycans are involved uh, in the protein function, like uh, mentioned uh, ligand receptor interaction. However, immerse variability and structural flexibility of glycans can also represent an obstacle to, in obtaining high uh, resolution structural data. And within Instruct uh, service, uh, what, we, what, we, what we can offer is this uh, list of uh, mass spectrometry analysis that include a determination of intact glycoprotein uh, mass by MALDI, uh, analysis of released and glycans, uh, their derivatization and analysis uh, by Malditov and Toftov, and identification of glycosylation sites and their relative occupancy by proteomic uh, approaches and heavy atom labeling uh, by nano LC uh, MS. And for this, we use uh, two. Um, to uh, principal uh, uh, instruments, and that is Maldito from Bruca and Orbitrap, uh, you may know from uh, Thermoscientific. So this is example in the in the last few, uh, in the in the few slides. Next uh, upcoming slides, I will show examples of uh, this kind of analysis, so you can get idea uh, what can be done and what to expect from uh, this kind of uh, analysis, what kind of data you can obtain. So in this case, <clears throat> uh, this is a protein from a human uh, cytomegalovirus, sorry. And uh, it has been expressed as a glycoprotein with the glycans attached. And you, you can see that, uh, that the, the, the mass of the protein is, uh, is, I mean, the protein exists in several glycosylation states, and these are completely diminished upon a deglycosylation uh, reaction. What can we see here? We, we can expect several glycosylation sites. We can also estimate, we can also see that uh, there is a dominant glycan attached to the protein, and when released, uh, we, we see a structure uh, or signal at uh, 179, which is which corresponds to to indicated uh, glycan. This also nicely explains the mass shifts between the signals in the uh, intact protein, where uh, exact uh, uh, 1038 Dalton shift is is observed. Um, <clears throat> I have to stress that that uh, total protein is measured in a linear mode with lower resolution, whereas uh, released smaller glycans are, are measured in reflector mode uh, that allows higher resolution. Uh, another example uh, is uh, analysis of released glycans, and um, here uh, 
uh, I would like to show our data coming from a lab that actually originates from our core research and that deals with uh, aberrant, aberrant glycosylation uh, associated with inherited congenital disorders, disorders of glycosylation. Uh, in this case, these are uh, neutral glycans where, that were released from uh, serum proteins from a patient and uh, corresponding negative uh, control. And even on the first side, we, we can see differences in certain uh, glycan structures that are uh, missing in a patient. If we uh, show the overall pathway of uh, glycan synthesis in this case, we see that there is a... a that there is a, a disruption in this particular uh, enzymatic step. And I'm not showing it, but we also, uh, we followed um, uh, this uh, particular enzyme, we sequenced it and really uh, the patient was a homozygous mutant in this, uh, in this particular enzyme. So um, the next uh, procedure that we can we can offer or analysis is uh, identification and confirmation of uh, glycosylation sites. Um, uh, we utilize for this uh, completely proteomic approach. Uh, upon glycosidase treatment, a water molecule is incorporated uh, into the structures of glycan and aspartic uh, residue and uh, creating, in fact, mutation from asparagine to aspartic acid. And this mass shift is associated, uh, this change is associated with mass shift of one Dalton. Uh, if we use labeled water, uh, O18 water, uh, the mass shift is uh, three, three Dalton. These peptides with these mass shifts can be easily identified in uh, uh, LCMS proteomic experiment where we use uh, our orbitra valide, and this is an example of a max band analysis of such a mixture. And from this, uh, uh, <clears throat> the overall output then looks like uh, this table. Uh, in this uh, particular case, we have uh, theoretical uh, glycosylation sites, uh, and we can say the all these sites are visible in our. Uh, proteomic experiment. Some of them, or most of them, are actually seen as uh, uh, O18 uh, aspartic uh, residues. <clears throat> to some of them, we see even a base peptide, or that means there, no, there is no glycosylation at this particular site. Uh, for those we don't see anything, we assume that it's completely glycosylated. That's why we can draw this uh, final uh, column with the numbers and estimation of uh, percentage or occupancy of a particular glycosylation site. And last uh, but not least, not mentioned in the overall uh, view at the beginning, uh, since we are not really ready to offer this as a service, is a glycopeptide analysis. Uh, in this case, uh, recombinant protein producing uh, yeast uh, was uh, digested by trypsin and the peptides were, uh, glycopeptides were enriched by helic SP. Uh, and this all was followed by common Malditov analysis. And already from this, we can uh, see mixture of glycopeptides and we can, based by their masses, we can assign uh, the, the nature of a glycop and the peptide and the glycans uh, attached uh, to these uh, to these peptides. Okay, so very sh short uh, uh, summary. We can measure intact uh, glycoprotein uh, masses. Uh, we can analyze uh, release glycans in their free or derivatized form. Uh, we can identify glycosides by proteomic approach, and we can uh, deliver some uh, occupancy data. And we would like to improve the analysis because uh, we, we see what, what the customers or, or what the partners are, are requiring. Uh, we will try to um, establish procedures for electrospray MS analysis of the intact proteins 
uh, that would, after the convolution, uh, identify precise masses. And of course, we would like to um, uh, identify glycopeptides not only based on their masses, uh, but also on a combined fragmentation uh, spectrum. Uh, our machine allows uh, ETDCID and HCD fragmentation. Okay, this is our glyco biology group, and the, the work was done by Marek and uh, Zuzana. Thank you for your attention.